Uh, okay, I, there's a story that has made big headlines over the Memorial De Day weekend, and I want to break it down and try to reduce hysteria a little bit, uh, but still tell you what the dangers are and what's going on. For many years, I've been talking about a sort of upcoming problem in the world of medicine, and this is resistance to antibiotics. Antibiotics, like vaccines, have been hugely important in medicine. The number of lives saved by antibiotics is huge. And you sometimes hear doctors say it's better to wait before taking antibiotics to make sure you really need them, because number one, uh, if you're taking antibiotics for a virus, they they don't do anything. Uh, and taking antibiotics too much can increase your resistance to antibiotics, which over the long term can make them less effective. For a while, I was getting a lot of sinus infections, Lewis, which did require antibiotics to the extent that they were in, in many of those cases bacterial. But my doctor would always suggest if it's not too uncomfortable, wait a few days, because if it does start going away on its own and you avoid taking antibiotics, that's a really good thing. Good advice. The other side of this is bacteria that are antibiotic resistant and an antibiotic resistant strain of bacteria was found in the urine of a 49 year old Pennsylvania woman. Some normal antibiotics were used and then colistin was used, which is considered a sort of antibiotic of last resort, especially for some dangerous superbugs, which can end up killing up to 50 percent of infected patients. And the bacteria, it was an E. coli strain, was resistant to this antibiotic of last resort. So the headlines, Lewis, were it's here, it's happening. We have a, a antibiotic resistant bacteria. It's true that the bacteria was specifically resistant to colistin, but doctors are still saying we have other antibiotics we haven't yet tried, which more than likely are going to handle this. So there was some hysteria about this. Uh, but the reality is this was found in the urine of of one 49 year old patient. That particular antibiotic didn't work, but there is still every indication that others will work. So the headlines were overblown. But it is still true that this is the first time in the U.S. that we have seen colistin resistant strains of bacteria in a person in the United States. So this is still a big deal. OK, here is a quote from CDC director Tom Frieden. It basically shows us that the end of the road isn't very far away for antibiotics, that we may be in a situation where we have patients in our intensive care units or patients getting urinary tract infections for which we do not have antibiotics. So you might say, well, hold on a second, David, there's tons of types of antibiotics. I can think of 20 or 30 or 40 off the top of my head. That's true. But the problem is there aren't that many kinds of antibiotics. There are many brands, but within that, there are just a few families. And that's where the problem is. Types of antibiotics are actually quite limited. You have your penicillins. Uh, amoxicillin is a common one kids sometimes get for strep throat or adults. You have cephalosporins. You have your macrolides. Uh, Zithromax is a common one that people might recognize from that. You've got your fluoroquinolones, including Cipro and Leviquin, which are common ones. You have your sulfonamides and your tetracyclines and your aminoglycosides. But that's really it. And oftentimes when people, number one, are intolerant to one within a family, they can be intolerant to others within that family. And when a bacteria or an individual build resistance to one within a family, they can also be resistant to others within that family. So this is something we've been talking about for years, Lewis. This is an upcoming issue. This particular story, we shouldn't be all losing it just over that. We don't need to freak out now, but this is we should a be huge, ready to freak out. Huge problem. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's a ton of resources being dedicated to trying to solve this problem, either no doubt. developing new antibiotics or alternative treatment methods. And uh, the day when we do have to freak out is is uh, relatively uh, quickly approaching. Well, it depends who you talk to, right? Some people say that within five to ten years that this may be a real and present and actual danger. Others say. I've read as much as 50 years away, but this this is not the type of thing we want to wait on, is it? No, it, not at all. And, and a urinary tract infection was was mentioned. That is something that can kill you if not treated. Uh, and it's a very common thing as well. All right. I'm on Twitter at D Pacman. Lewis is on Twitter at Lewis Motomedy. What a show. Great to be back from the long weekend. I've talked about how people of all ages, but particularly millennials, are owning cars less and participating more in the sharing economy. And one of the more popular options is Zipcar, which gets you a car when you want it, when you need it. 
They offer all sorts of cars, SUVs, hybrids, whatever you need. It includes insurance and it includes gas. You just pay for the time that you actually use the car and you can reserve the car online from your smartphone over the phone. Then you unlock it with your zip card. Each car share member reduces their personal CO2 emissions by between 1100 and 1600 pounds per year. For our audience, Zipcar is offering $25 of free driving credit if you sign up at joinzipcar.com slash David. Support our show, reduce your carbon emissions and your spending on cars. Sign up at joinzipcar.com slash David.